So, this movie's been kind of just shoved out in the middle of the summer. And if you've been paying attention, you'll all be noticing that it's not reviewing spectacularly. Certainly not like any other Star Wars film we've seen recently. That might be because it's stuck behind Deadpool 2, as well as Infinity War, in terms of where it's currently been released. Normally, I'd say this is due to the Star Wars franchise being a bunch of trash, but it's probably more because Disney seemed to put 100% of their effort behind this movie. It's the Star Wars title to cover their losses on the franchise until the next one, in another year, comes to ruin everything on the internet and cause endless arguments. Now, on to the actual review. Let's start with the good stuff. I do have to mention, by the way, just real quick, spoilers ahead, beware, it's just the first half of the movie, but for the first half of the movie, it's decent. Whatever. Anyway, Han, in the beginning of the movie, is running away from his surrogate mother figure. It's sort of like Oliver Twist in that he steals things as a child and no one suspects him, but it's really not that important. He does happen to have a girlfriend for some reason, although we all know what's going to happen to that thanks to uh, the next couple of movies. Yeah, real smart idea putting in a girlfriend in the prequel to your movies, Disney. Real smart. Anyway, Han escapes, however, Kira is recaptured and sold off, assumedly. However, Han escape is sort of the infantry. While in the infantry, Han has a very Saving Private Ryan type of scene. It's weirdly out of place, but I sort of like the feel of it. I don't know. It's a weird place to put it. It has real no importance on the plot anyway, other than showing us that Han was in the military, but whatever. Events unfold, and eventually, Han deserts the army alongside Chewbacca, getting a ride on a mercenary ship off to steal Quaxium, basically ultra-fuel for starfighters. Unfortunately, this ends up going poorly, and both Han and his new surrogate father figure Beckett have to pay back their employer, Dryden Voss, with another shipment of Quaxium. This leads them to recruit Kiera, now a servant of Dryden Voss, possibly because she was sold to him, and Lando Calrissian, the smooth talking smuggler who is no longer the only black man in the galaxy like his original appearance. And really, only appearance before this one. Anyway, this part of the movie is good. It sets up their heist and sets up all the characters pretty well. I mean, most of the surviving ones, anyway. Although it does feel rushed at times. As much as I hate to say this, this really could have been its own movie, but with a second movie to fill out the rest. Yeah, I know, there's a bunch of Part 2 movies already, so I'm not complaining, but I feel like there was a lot of potential in this movie, and, well, maybe they just put too much in, and also not enough in, if that makes sense. It's a summer movie, so I guess they didn't want to really make a sequel, so they decided to just stuff two sets of character development in movies and just call it a day. I will, however, say that the environments look pretty in this movie, and I know that seems like a weird thing to point out in a Star Wars film, since it's pretty much expected to be pretty, and all the action's supposed to be good. But maybe I like it because it gives us a new look at the world of the Empire. This new look at the Empire shows us all the different worlds and the different slums of Star Wars, namely on Han's home planet of Corelia. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not exactly sure. It looks more like 40k than anything else. A lot of angular structures, a lot of smog. It doesn't look like a very nice place to live. I know this is a kind of small thing to talk about, but honestly, it's the last good thing I can think about about this movie. Now, on to the bad, which is why I'm sure you're all here. The film drags on too long, plain and simple. This is a problem with most Star Wars films, but in this one, it definitely feels like there's certain parts could definitely be cut, no matter what your opinion on this film is. It keeps trying to make us care for certain characters, but in the end, it doesn't really matter in the long run. Like, the two people in the beginning of the movie that are part of Beckett's crew just don't matter in the end. They have no mark on his character, and neither do they have on Hans. Really, it's just... shallow. Honestly, this is just a problem with the film in general. It feels shallow. It's not a Star Wars film. It's a mediocre heist film, taking off the skin of Star Wars and putting it on itself to make it feel special in the eyes of Disney. And it's not special, it's just a mediocre heist film. It's nothing more, nothing less. There is a slightly suspect moment 
that will make no sense to anyone who didn't watch the animated series. The very much canon one is good to go check out if you got the time, but otherwise, don't bother. A certain character shows up that I'm not really going to spoil, but you will feel left out if you haven't watched said series. In the end, though, it just feels like another summer heist movie, like I said. It is an awful, but again, mediocre. Granted, it's better than the trash fire that was The Last Jedi, but nobody was expecting this film to set the world on fire. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Do a barrel roll! I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Jingle, jangle. As I go riding merrily along.